Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Frontier Town. Original air date is sometime in 1949. Title is Guns of Wrath. Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Calgary, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West. The tamed and the untamed. From the Pecos to Powder River, Dodge City to Poker Flat. These are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for. Teeming crucibles of pioneer freedom. Frontier Town! You know, down in Dos Rios, that's the little frontier town I come from and where I'm the only lawyer, the law business certainly takes many a peculiar turn. Folks seem to come to a cow town lawyer like Chad Remington, <laughs> that's me, for almost any kind of advice and for help in almost any kind of trouble. And trouble, believe me, we have a plenty out on the roaring, roistering frontier. Of course, a lot of our troubles aren't brought to me. They they just happen. Like the trouble we had just a few weeks ago. Mister, that was bad trouble. Real bad trouble. Cherokee O'Bannon, the ex-medicine man who runs the Dos Rios livery stable, now that he's reformed, uh, somewhat, had gone with me to the judges for supper. To Cherokee, the principal attraction was the supper. Me, it was the judge's daughter, Libby. Well, we were finishing off one of Libby's lemon sponge pies when... Is something wrong, Cherokee? Uh, Now, come on, Cherokee, there is something wrong. You're staying with your cup as if you've never seen coffee before. Uh, Oh, come on, O'Bannon. The judge and Libby have caught you with your jaw down. What's wrong? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I was just reflecting on what a spot of brandy might do to enhance the flavor of this mocha and java. (laughs) Well, Cherokee, I haven't got any brandy, but I... I've got a bit of wine. Wine? <coughs> My dear Jack. Jack, it sounds as if there's trouble down in town. It sure does, Libby. And from a little I can see here through the window, I, I'd say someone's raiding the Wells Fargo office. Wells Fargo? Libby, you stay here. Cherokee, get the judge's rifle off the wall. Let's get going fast. <laughs> By the 
time we got our horses back into town, a posse had already mounted up and was streaking out of Dos Rios, following the bandits who headed for the hills over the rickety wooden bridge across the White River. There was no moon, and under the somber awning of blackness, there was little to follow but the receding sound of the hoofbeats which led further and further up a gradually narrowing trail into the far rocky regions of the hills. By this time, we were sure we'd lost him, and the marshal called the halt to hold a council of war. Well, Marshal, what do we do now? I can't say right off, Judge. And I got a pretty good notion that the leader of that bunch was Ab Cleaver. He's been pulling raids not too far from here lately. Well, even though I've heard this Cleaver gent is as smart as a rattlesnake back into his hole... I think he's making a mistake this time. What do you mean, Cherokee? Well, Marshal, I think Cherokee means they've ridden in the sort of a cul-de-sac, a bottleneck. Because except for Lars Peterson's ranch, there's nothing back up in those hills but rim rock that runs straight up and the headwaters of the White River. Chad, I do believe you're right. Once they ride past Peterson's ranch, they literally have their backs to the wall and we can starve them out. Well, I'll be doggone. Durned if you're all not right. Mac, you take four men and crawl up to the rim behind them two creeks up there that flow into the river. Half a dozen you other fellas go with my chief deputy Andy Thomas and form a half circle down here. The rest of us will go back to town, get some more ammunition and rifles. We'll be back up here by sunup to give you some relief and close in on them blasted crooks. <laughs> Watch it, Cherokee. Riding around this rim the way you're silhouetted to make a perfect target if any of Cleaver's... Billy Blue Blazers, Chad. That drilled a hole right through my stature. Yeah, well, it proves one thing. We're not going to catch them napping. Can you see any of our boys around here? Well, let me see now. Yeah. Isn't that the chief deputy, Andy Thomas, squatting down behind that... <laughs> Come on, Mr. O'Bannon, your hats are full of holes. Now it's starting to look like a beehive. And believe me, I'm no honey. Or, or am I? Get up there! Oh, boy. Hold it. Oh. Yeah. Anything happen, Andy? Uh, nothing but that sniping. Can you see them down there? Nope. Just a puff of smoke when they throw a shot up here. Well, the marshal said he'd be up with some lunch for you around noontime. But meantime, here are two extra rifles, 300 rounds of shells, and a spyglass the judge's father used at Gettysburg. Oh, thanks, Chad. And uh, tell the marshal not to forget a plug of my char and tobacco. All up here for gosh knows how. Chad, ain't you listening to me? Oh, oh I'm sorry, Andy. I was looking down to where they've got Cleaver and his gang sold up. Without ladders, they'll never be able to get up here, but they could move off to the east a few hundred yards and come up behind the Peterson place. If they did, with what supplies they could get from there, this siege might last for months. I'd like to see them try it. Lars Peterson and Helga are about the two most stubborn Swedes I ever encountered. Wouldn't be a wouldn't buy a bottle of my rattlesnake oil for two bits. They'd fight Cleaver and his whole gang to a fairly well. well. Just the same, I think the thing to do is to go back to town and call a little strategy meeting. What we've got to do is figure every possible move Cleaver might make and have some counter tactics ready. You well, can't lose nothing by getting your heads together. <laughs> Just a few heads. Well, there isn't a person in this entire valley who has the time to spare two months until Cleaver's starved out, if he does manage to get some supplies. Found, found that nefarious, no good nitwit. When I get back to town, I'm going to write Mr. Stetson a letter. What we need out here is a hat that's bulletproof. <laughs> Not only did we need hats that were bulletproof, but we found we needed a lot of help. Cleaver wasn't just shrewd as a catamount. He was a man who was willing to take a chance. However, as we had figured it out, Cleaver had made a mistake. Apparently, when he laid his plans for the Wells Fargo raid, he'd counted on crossing the river and getting away. But instead of crossing the Red River, which had meadowland on its opposite bank, he crossed the White found himself with his back to the rocks on one side and the headwaters on the other. That was about the only joyful note I could sound in the whole meeting which the judge and the marshal called for early that evening. 
Grand, Grand, won't you please quiet down? As much as we want your help and ideas, we can't hear anything if you all try talking at the same time. All right, Chad. Would you go on with what you were saying? Well, it's not much more, Judge. I just think with no moon tonight, it'd be a good idea if we could sneak about a dozen men up to Lars Peterson's place, just in case Cleaver gets the same idea that I got. Hey, that's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. And just to start the ball rolling, I'll volunteer to be one of those men myself. The way the canyon lays, if Cleaver ever gets wise, he can pick us off one by one and we'll never get anybody to Peterson. What's more, if we do get men up to Peterson... What happens if they try to break out some other way? Please, please, folks. Not all at once. After all, the marshal's in charge. What do you think, Marshal? Well, if we could get some of our men into Peterson's, it'd certainly stop Cleaver from... Oh, Marshal, Marshal, wait a minute. Who just came in? Helga Peterson. Good, you brought me up for the meeting because I come here with bad news. Bad news, Helga? Blazing blue, blue blisters. Bad news? Now what? Come on, Helga. You better come up here on the platform so we can all hear you. That's just the most awful thing. Nothing so bad ever happened to me, never. Yes, but what is it, Helga? What happened? Those bad men, those crooks. They break into our house. Oh, no. We're in sidewinders. Now we are in for it. What happened to your husband? What happened to Lars? Lars Spike. He fights all he could. He fights like a wild man, but those outlaws beat him on the head and take him prisoner. How does it happen you got away, Olga? He didn't get away. They let me go and tell me to come down here and give you a message and buy Jump and Yemen. It's the worst job I ever had to do. That crook Abe Cleaver. He say, unless you get him and his men out of Kenyon and ride away, they dam up headwaters of White River and they blow up them and flood out whole town. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't go getting excited. They can't flood the town. It's impossible. I'm afraid it's not impossible, Marshal. Well, where they're located, they could dam up that water in no time. Already they got men damming up water. And with the water dammed up, even a child could divert it and let it come roaring down on the town. Just that now, but I say do it. Let them crooks loose. Well, you can't be serious. I can't, can't I? You think we're going to lose our ranches and our stores and everything we own just to catch them? Side wine and crooks who haven't done us any harm? That's right now. Folks, friends, are you a lot of sheep? Are you going to let a low-down, double-dyed common murderer stampede you into cowardice? Why, and take it from a man who knows, if you accede to this nefarious demand, you'll never be able to live with yourselves. For shame! Oh, I can play the neighbors, neighbors, maybe I haven't always been right, but... I think everyone here will grant that I've never consciously worked against the interest of my friends in my town. What are you doing, Chad? Running for congressman? <laughs> uh, this is no matter for laughing. This is serious. And even though Abe Cleaver is holding me their husband, it's uh, what you call it. Uh, he's hostage? Yeah, hostage. I tell you, we must not do what Crook said. We must fight. We must fight back. I say... Keep Helga here to start with. No sense sending her back to suffer along with Lars. When Helga doesn't come back, that'll be Cleaver's answer. By the time he realizes that is his answer, we ought to be able to figure something out. And come ebb tide or high water, we'll fight for this valley like men. Not like the yellow-spined cowards those owl hoots really are. <laughs> We'll return to the second act of Guns of Wrath, our exciting frontier town adventure, in just a few moments. And now, Frontier Town. (laughs) 
Like I said before, this was trouble. Real trouble. And even though I did pull a politician's spellbinding trick assuring everyone that we'd fight back successfully, I honestly didn't think Ab Cleaver would do any more than dam up the water to frighten us. And that was because I didn't know Ab Cleaver. As I learned later from Lars Peterson, Cleaver didn't wait very long. Scarcely an hour after the time he figured Helga ought to be back with our word of acquiescence, Cleaver walked out to where his men were gathered around the Willowbrush Dam they'd built. Well, Ab, you old lady get back? No, we ain't gonna wait. I'm gonna show him that when Ab Cleaver says something, he means it. It's okay with me, boss. Me and the boys already got the powder planted under the dam. All we gotta do is light the fuse and ten million gallons of water will come rushing down on those reels like it was judgment day. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? You got matches, ain't you? Light the fuse. <laughs> you know something, Ab? <laughs> this is gonna be more fun than the 4th of July. He's lit, boys. Now scatter. All right, come on. crossed me up, and Dos Rios was underwater. But the strange thing was, and we could see it from our vantage point up in the rocks of Crow's Nest, that the town wasn't wiped out. Far from it, it, it was just as if the river had swollen in a flash spring flood, flowed over its banks, and covered the streets of the town with about three feet of silt-filled, muddy water. Well, the judge, Libby, Cherokee, and I pondered this. I had to figure it out as we looked down on the sodden town. Why, this is no worse than that spring flood we had when I was a little girl. Maybe not even as bad. No question about it, Libby. But I, for one, can't make it out. You think Cleaver figures that with only a few feet of water, we'll go back into town? And then he let the rest of it loose and really drown us? Well, with a man like that, I suppose anything's possible. Not this time. Because if he had wanted to drown us, he could have done it in the first place. I, George, you're right. What do you make of it, Chad? I don't know exactly, Judge, but I'm sure there must have been some reason for it. Just trying to put myself in Ab Cleaver's place and figure out what he could possibly have had in... Drawn it? I think I got it. Got it? Got what? You see? See way down there, just kind of picking their way into town? Mm -hmm. You can just barely make them out. There's eight horses, and I reckon they got eight men on their backs. I see them, Chad. There's two of them. What do you think they're up to? Unless I miss my guess. And you missed plenty this trip. Those men are Ab Cleaver and his gang. If they wanted to get away, they wouldn't be heading back again toward town. Is that right? Yes. I guess so. But what do you... I think they let loose a portion of that water to clear the town. Now that the town's cleared, they're going back in, completely unmolested, to help themselves to anything and everything they can find. Of all the obnoxious, audacious, dastardly things. Here we are, way up here, and if we start down toward town, they'll be able to pick us off like flies. Have house flies, of course, not the horse fly, who is quite sagacious and wary. Ted, can't we do something? You bet we can. Now look, we're up here on the high ground, just as they were, except that we're up on the headwaters of the Red River. Mm -hmm. So what's to stop us from pulling the same trick they pulled and threatening to let the whole Red River down on them unless they give up? 
After the unfortunate advice you gave everybody, Chad, already, do you think that you have any influence left with them? Oh, maybe not, but never yet ruled a man off a triumph. So what do you say? Let's get down off these rocks and over to the mesa where the rest of the folks are gathered. Doggone it, Chad. Two wrongs don't make a right. If we dammed up the Red River, we might finish Dos Rios for fair. By yours, that's what I say. Enough is enough. Let them crooks get away. Let's get back to our home. But you can't. You can't quit when you've gone this far. Now, look, don't you see? If you men will get back up in the hills and start building the dam, I can circle down with the marshal and a posse and we'll have them cut off. Caught between the flood, we can let loose on them. And enough lead to make a lot of them look like lace curtains. It's just a trick, a trap. Dad just wants to threaten them. And if Cleaver won't give up and you don't want to let the water down on them, you don't have to. Folks, this time, Chad's right. I'm blamed if I don't think so. If you folks are willing to help, me and my men will risk our lives. Won't we, boys? Uh, uh, what are you looking at me for, Marshal? Well, if we ride, you'll ride with us, won't you, Cherokee? Well, when you put it that way, Chad, uh, yes. And what about the rest of you? All right, then. Let's knock on these horses. Rain up, men. This is as far as we go. Uh, be blamed, you were right. See? Those men are ransacking the stores and loading everything they can onto their horses. Well, how are you going to pow out with Cleaver from here? You just watch, Cherokee. Hey, Cleaver! Cleaver, can you hear us? There, we're up here, over your heads. To the east, up by the Quakies. Looking up here. Cleaver! You've ridden yourself into a trap by coming back into Dos Rios. I'm here with the marshal and a 20-man posse. The rest of the town is back up in the hills. They're all set to let the Red River roar down behind you. Now, if you've got any brains at all, you'll quit. This is the Marshal, Cleaver, and we're giving you just one minute to make up your mind. Well, I'll be hanged. I'll take that back. I'll be uh, blamed. You see them? They've all got their heads together talking it over. Chad, I believe this is going to work. It looks like they've made their minds up. All right, Marshal! You win! <laughs> Cleaver, <laughs> tell your men to throw your guns into the street. We're coming down. All right, boys. Let's get going. Hey, 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 hey. Sure were feeling good. Me, in particular, as we threaded our way through the aspens, came out in the lane on the back of High Baxter's ranch and headed through the water and mud into town. A few seconds after the marshal told the boys to spread out... Split up, boys! Cover both ends of the street! Cherokee suddenly nudged me and pointed to something. Dad, isn't that someone trying to get away through the alley? You're doggone right it is, and if I'm not mistaken, it's Ab Cleaver. Come on, Cherokee. I'm sure going to need your help. Cleaver, the farther you run now, the farther you're going to bounce later when I drag you back to town. Oh, so that's the way you want to play, huh? 
Ted, you're wearing your gun. What's the matter with you? Perforate that prodigious pole through. Nothing doing, Cherokee. I got plans for that buzzard. He jumped off his horse and ran behind that piece of down timber. Doggone it, this time we got him. Oh, boy, easy. <laughs> down, Cherokee, flatten. Now, look, you old fake. This time I'm going to trust my life to you. You doggone well better be careful with it. What do you mean? What are you going to do? While you stay behind this rock and cover me, I'm going to belly crawl across this clearing. Pull him out from behind that log and beat his brains out. If he has any. Dad, for goodness sake, be careful. I'll be cautious. You be careful. Step away your shoe covering me. All right, Doc. Here goes. Chad, look out! <laughs> And that makes six. All right, Cleaver, your gun's empty, I reckon, and my fists are loaded. Now, come here. Are you, you loudmouth? You, you, you won't be loudmouth. You're not going to even be able to talk. Don't, don't. Oh. All right, Cherokee. I bruise my knuckles on this polecat's chin. You grab him and sling him over your horse. They're going back to town loaded with skunk. Miss Libby, after all that exertion, how about another piece of your lemon sponge pie? Why, certainly, Cherokee. More coffee? <laughs> I guess Cherokee will take a second cup of coffee if you, uh... Well, uh, if you give him something to, uh, put in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... I still have that wine in the cupboard. Well, now, Judge, I really... Oh, no, no, wait. Wait just a minute. Uh, uh, what kind of wine is it, Judge? It's a very wonderful, rare old port. Mm. I rather think. Oh, Cherokee, Cherokee. Now, now don't say you're going to turn down a, a libation. A little port wine? Indeed, sir, I am not. Because with a man of my character, it's any port in a storm. <laughs> <laughs> Frontier Town, starring Tex Chandler, is a Bruce Ells production. Story and supervision by Joel Murcott. Direction by Paul Franklin. Music written and played by Ivan Dittmar. Be sure to be with us again same time next week for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Tex Chandler. And now this is Bill Foreman telling you that Frontier Town came to you from Hollywood.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.